Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday in Thailand. Uh, we're out on a build site. I got my office all set up over here. Waiting for that first truck to come in. It's not quite nine o'clock yet. Got a lot of dirt done yesterday. Uh, when we started yesterday morning, we were about right here with one pile across the back. So we completed all this all the way out almost to the drive and all the way down across here, about straight out in front of me here. So today, all we got left is this. I don't have a path made out here yet, but. Um, so all we got left is basically from that little stick over there by those trees. Across, maybe one more dump beyond that. So this was, I think, 67 loads we brought in yesterday. I'm down a bit from the day before, but they didn't get started real well. I think they had a couple trucks tied up somewhere else. But there's no reason we shouldn't be able to get all the dirt in here today. I have not heard whether they're bringing the tractor in today to start level, leveling or not. But I would think when they get close to these last loads, they'd get a tractor in here to start leveling so they can bring in any additional loads we need to just level it out. My plan is from a meter above the road where this here is going to be spread out to, um, I'm just going to have them taper a uh, incline drive right out to that curve piece when they get the tractor here so you just come straight off the curve and then maybe sweep it around a little bit so if you're coming from this way you can kind of sweep around up into the drive. The uh, concrete fence is going to set back at least one car width from the road so that we have guest parking along the road and then we'll have a couple spots just inside the fence. If you have overnight guests you can get everything inside and lock it up. Once we get this all leveled out then we'll get up here with a tape measure. We'll nail down some exact measurements. I'll get some string and some sticks and we'll lay out the house footprint right up here so she can see it. And if we need to move the house around or whatever, we can do it now before we leave. And then we're gonna mark where the well needs to get dug so we can get that well dug. We do have the electrical project scheduled for today. Um, the guys were out here last night. If you saw the video I posted yesterday, um, they brought in the anchor over there. I don't know if you can see it in the camera because it might be kind of small, but it's kind of right out straight above my finger there. It's a chunk of concrete with a big eye rod sticking out of it, eye bolt, eye rod, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that will get buried right there pretty close to where it's at when the trucks get over there. And that'll be the anchor, po anchor point for the last pole on that line, which is going to carry our wire down to those other poles. But, uh, First things first, we got to get the poles in here or nothing's going to happen with it. But we are going to take a trip up to Sisaket and a couple other places around the area if we can get a decent vehicle because I'm not taking the silver bullet to Sisaket. I don't trust it that much. Okay, we got a lot of action going on now. We have dirt trucks, dirt trucks, pole truck. And I think that's our tractor to start leveling this thing out. So a couple of new drivers today that we haven't seen all week. This is one of them here. And then there's a old dude in a blue old, old truck. So we've already got in. I don't even know. Let me see what we got here. 20 loads this morning. The problem is these trucks are going down that skinny road to get out of here and the pole truck needs to work off the road. So we're gonna have to do some leapfrogging here for a little bit. But I think they're just dropping them in the hole and that's it. So if that's all they're doing, it should only take a couple minutes per move out of the way here so this guy can get by. Oh, he's part of the power crew. He's going right down in there. He got four-wheel drive, though. He don't have me. Oh, yeah, he's got the ladder to get up the pole. Uh, 
A hundred baht. That's what they charged to bring these poles over here and set all eight of them. Not a hundred baht each, but one hundred baht. That's three dollars for them to load the truck, bring the truck over here, put the pole in the hole, and drive back. Put eight poles in the hole. So we had to go through and talk to these landowners about trimming their trees back to get our poles through, but I think we only had to talk to one because there's only one tree that's really in the way. And a $100 bill says none of them have a level with them. Not that I care a lot, but if it was me, I'd have to have a level or I'd just go crazy. How do you know a level he had the tool? I don't see a level, but I don't know how they do it. That's what I was just saying on the camera. If it was me, it'd drive me crazy if I didn't have a level right now. Yeah, they're just looking at it. Oh, man. <laughs> see, she knows. I don't have one. What's the best way to notify these trucks that we only want to go to our line? Should you just tell each driver or is... Go inside the line, you mean? Yeah, port, only put dirt up to the sticks. Okay, not beyond that. Right, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you tell them or is there a boss we can tell? I can I... tell them. Okay, just whenever they come through. No, but... no. Okay, she'll just have to tell each driver because I don't think we've seen a boss man out here. What's that? Huh? I was I... talking to the camera. I tell him. Okay, yeah, I see that. And tell everybody. Okay, here comes another truck right yeah. there. Okay. So that thing needs to get dumped. They need to, this thing here, this anchor for the for the sling for the pole yeah. needs to get buried. It actually needs to get moved over. So I don't know at what point we need to move it over, but when they start bringing dirt over, we need to look at this stick because that stick is the last pole. And then right down to where the sticks are, see the sticks I put in the other pole holes down there by the tree. Yeah. By so the tree. this here should go right straight off of here but move, so this needs to go like right over here. Mm -mm. So it, it's a long time to... Yeah, but I'm just letting you know that when yeah. we get to that point, we gotta move this yeah. over. So all the way to that wire, that, oh, that great big roll of wire we bought, plus the second roll, is all gonna hang right on that. The weight of that wire is gonna hang right there. Mm. Or that's not gonna hang there, but it's gonna hold it back because they're gonna tie that wire. They're gonna anchor it to this pole so this has got to hold that last pole up. It's holding all the weight to the wire. So when they can hang in the sling, the cable, after it's buried? Right. So we bought a thousand meters of wire so that we would have enough left over to run from here into the house. So it's about, I guess, about 200, 100 meter left? No, we, we're going to use like, one piece is, I think, what did I say? 332 meters, right? From yeah. there to there. Yeah. There's going to be some weight sag in it. So say 340 meters from there to here. But we got to run two wires, so that's seven or 680 meters. Mm. We'll use to here. Mm. So that, and we got to run two wires from here into the house. That's probably 50, 60 meters. I don't know. But I'm going to try to go underground, run it over, and then come back up in that utility room in the middle of the house. That's what I want to do. I don't want to go through the side of it if I don't have to. And 100 wire, I mean, wire, the wire left, we will tie up and leave here. To no, no, we'll take it with us. Okay. Because what they'll do is they'll bring the wire here and they'll run it down the pole and hook it up to that, remember that board we had to buy? Okay. And the little box with the little breakers and he's got the uh, plug in. Oh. So that will all go on the pole. So the pole will have one plug on it. And that's what they're calling temporary power oh, right. until the house is built. And then once the house is built, when they go to permanent power, what they call permanent power? No, temporary power. Right now it's temporary. Farm, farm power, right. But it's one plug-in basically. So what I mean, the remaining wire we bought, we're not going to leave here. We're going to leave it at your mom's or with your brother. Oh. Because... They'll bring the power to the pole and down to the, the little circuit breaker thing they bought, oh. we bought, and hook that circuit breaker up to the plug-in. And that's all, that's where the wire will stop. When we get the house ready, we'll put wire from the house out here to the pole, and then the power company will come out here, and they will put a meter in and hook our wires to the house up to that and hook the wires up to the pole. Okay. 
but we got to keep that wire to go from here to the house. So that line of sticks right there um, is where we're going to bring the dirt out to. That's the pole anchor. That's going to get buried somewhere right in that location. I should go over that way a little bit. We'll see. But this is how far out we're going to bring the dirt. It's going to leave us some room out here for some parking. We want to put some like palm trees or something on this side, the, the concrete wall, once we get it in there. There's somebody up there on our fish pond. Okay, we're going to go check out the power poles. Something's going to stay here. Oh, there's a power guy on his motorbike. Hey, remind him. He might dig the hole to bury that. Remind him that the trucks... Remind him the trucks are going to dump dirt here too. Okay. One meter of dirt. Dirt trucks are going back out the other way, I suppose, for the next few minutes until they get these last five poles set. And that little tree right there behind that last pole right straight back from Sompit's brother is the one that we're going to have to cut to get the wires through. So Sompit went and talked to the lady that owns that land last night. She said, no problem, cut them down. Not cut the tree down, we'll cut the limbs down. I just hope she realizes it's going to be half the tree we got to take down. How about you guys? But I'm calling bullshit on just forming those poles. Those things are old. They're not brand new. They'd be nice and white concrete. And that's the thing. You can't believe half the shit you hear over here. But those are no, there's no way those are brand new poles. They must have ordered the damn things. They told us they had to make them. They were going outside to do it right now. That's what they told us on Monday or Tuesday. Doesn't matter. That's all right. They told us Saturday. It's Saturday. We got our poles. So, like I said yesterday, that's what we want. Don't give us some bullshit answer. Just tell us what you got, and we'll deal with it. That's the best hundred baht I ever spent, man. Three freaking dollars. I'm just shocked. Three dollars. That other place we went and priced poles at, their poles were uh, about 30% higher in cost. These were 2,800. They wanted 3,600. And they wanted $400 per pole to bring them here and set them in the hole. So not only did we save, what, 800 baht per pole, we saved 3,200 on installation. But I run the numbers on these this whole project last night. The electrical, if you remember, they quoted me 92,000 baht. The guy that came out day one and looked at it, told us 92,000 baht, he'd do it. Everything front to back. So Pitt's brother and this other guy, uh, basically are just doing it for the labor. We bought all the supplies. And we're gonna get it done. I looked at the number last night, it was 49,007 something. 49,750 baht. So we saved 45,000 baht. Which is about, what, $1,500? So this is what I call an anchor for the anchor wire for the last pole on the run. They call it a sling here, and I don't know what they call this thing. But we looked all over town for one of these eye bolts because we were going to dig a hole, put eye bolt in it or whatever this thing is called, and drop some concrete in it. But we couldn't find this rod with the loop on the end of it. We went to like five different places. So we let them know and they said, don't worry about it, we'll find one. So yesterday they showed up with this. They uh, borrowed it out of that field right down there. Again, I remind everybody that we asked about whether we need to concrete these in or not, and they said no, that nobody concretes them, that this dirt sets up, this clay sets up so hard that you don't need to concrete them. They said within three weeks it'll be so solid, no worries. 
crooked, guys. I hope you don't leave it like that. Yo! I know what I'd get my brother-in-law for Christmas. It's called a freaking level, because that don't, something that don't look square at all. Yo! Try to get them to square the damn thing up. They want to stand there and look straight up at it. They got to get back. It's still fucking crooked. It's still leaning this way. I'm gonna freaking look at that the rest of my life, man. Sorry, guys, but I want it right. Should have did it right the first time, boys. They're gonna have to pull it out and reset it. I told them like four times before they packed all that dirt in there, it was crooked. They'd move it a little bit, but the problem is they're standing right under it, looking up, trying to, they need to step back. Come here and look at this. Look at the pole. Can you see it's crooked? Yeah. Yeah. I told them all four times. How about the other one? I don't care about those. I don't have to stare at those the rest of my life. I got to stare at this one. <laughs> so, I just want it straight. Me to take the dirt all the way out? Yeah, because they packed it down in there. That's how I told them. Like I said, I told them three or four times. It's not far enough. When they bump it a little, bump it a little. They don't want to listen to me. They can do it again. Serves them right, they didn't listen to me. Uh, yeah, like big, big load now. <laughs> That's their problem. Damn Farang. Making life miserable in Thailand, I guess. Not sure why they put the crane on that side of it, that don't help. Post hole digger they got been broke about 15 times. I was looking at it earlier, it's been all welded and braced and re welded and re welded. The handles on that. Oh, I'm looking, trust me. <laughs> That's the way uh -huh, uh -huh, I like it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Maybe time next time they'll listen, they won't have to dig it back up. heavy crosswind too. Oh, that's our wire for our last pole over there. <laughs> Don't hit yourself with that thing, man. You knock yourself out, bro. We got a couple of trees here that are needing to come out. These two, and I think that one right there, there's three of them they want to take out. So we had to go find the owner of the property to make sure that we could take these out of here, but they said it was all right. 
Just amazes me though. We waited till we had all the poles up and then went and asked. Man, I thought it was coming this way. <laughs> all right, they got all the hardware up and they're starting to stretch wire. It's 500 meters per roll, so 1,000 meters. You'll see them, but this is how they tie them to the insulators. I think they loop this through the insulator and then wrap this around the cable itself, the wire. It's got some aggregate on there. So they're just going to drive and run it out. Okay, so it's almost five o'clock Saturday evening. I was really hoping to get something completed today, but it didn't happen. The, uh, they had some problems on the dig end. It sounded like the backhoe ran out of fuel. They had to go to town and get fuel, get back out there, get it started back up. And we were down for about an hour and a half. Um, so they are about this much short right here probably 10 or eh, maybe 15 loads and I think they're still driving but there's no way they're gonna get it all tonight before it gets dark um, so we're not gonna get the dirt done the tractor is not gonna be here and the wire project we had that guy come in and cut those trees down per the neighbor the lady in the pink shirt over there is the owner of this property right here but uh, she stopped by and the electric guy said, hey, is it okay if we take all these down? Sure, no problem. So now the electric's on hold until they get the rest of these trees out of here. I'm not sure why they didn't just start out that way, but I mean, the wire will clear. I mean, I'm glad they'll take them out, but, and the best thing to do is wait, but. Okay, it's the end of the day on Saturday. Um, didn't get much done from the last uh, update. But uh, we are set for tree cutting in the morning, early. So we should be able to get those trees down. They should be able to finish the wiring job uh, tomorrow. The wire guy just left. Um, we've talked to the dirt people. I think we're scheduled, so we're still in good shape. But anyhow, hey, hey, he rock. Who is it? Huh? Who is it? Where? Who is it? It's Sawpit. Oh, some pit and candy. And? And the, the what? Everything, Sabai. Sabai. Yeah. <laughs> the jack of all trades, Sabai. Because <laughs> now she's working on a retaining my, wall for us. So. She works like, if no Google, if we don't have Google, we can rely on Sabai. <laughs> she's, she's our Craigslist. <laughs> okay, anyhow, we're out of here tonight. We got to go look at, actually, the electrical guy does retaining walls also. We're leaving here. We're going to go look at his work right now. And then we're going to try to work out a deal. We might get started on the perimeter concrete fence walls or whatever here in the near future. So um, we'll just update as we go. Good night. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. See you later. Bye -bye.